I see what you're doing, Batwoman writers. And I have just one thing to say to you. Too little, too late. Okay, so, last week, the writers finally took a step toward making Kate Kane a little less intolerable. A small step, yes, but it's more than we'd gotten up to that point. I said at the time that the follow-up was going to be crucial, and there was a follow-up, but it's like waiting until after a stabbing victim has lost too much blood to stitch up the wound. You might have bought the victim a little more time, but the damage has been done, and now we're just waiting for the inevitable so we can all go home. They can try to fix Kate all they want, but there's no fixing this show. All those fans who left, they're not coming back. So while I appreciate the writers acknowledging that they may have screwed the pooch a few times too many, all they've really done is made reviewing this show a slightly less agonizing experience. Episode 16, Through the Looking Glass, begins with Jacob, Kate, and Alice burying the body of August Cartwright, who Kate murdered in cold blood last week. The first thing that jumps out at me about this scene is that they have taken Alice's handcuffs off. After he rescued her last week, Jacob put Alice in handcuffs, presumably with the intent of bringing her to justice, and now the cuffs have just been taken off because... F*** it. Kate is not dealing with being a murderer all that well. She's troubled by it, as well she should be, and Jacob wastes no time at all in telling her not to feel guilty. But a switch seems to have been flipped this week because while previously Kate would have no concept of guilt whatsoever, because guilt would imply that she made a mistake worth feeling guilty about and she as woman hear her roar so that could never happen, now Kate is having a really hard time with this. Kate says to him, so what, I should just pretend it never happened? And again, they're just retconning stuff because that's exactly what Kate did the last time she killed someone. Just pretended it never happened. And apparently that's what the writers did too. With the body buried, Alice wants to find Mouse. Jacob thinks they should find him together, but him and Alice have much different ideas about what should happen when Mouse is found, so she starts to leave. Jacob tries to stop her, but Alice pulls a gun on him. Jacob's own gun, which Alice took without him realizing it because he's a man and thus incompetent by default. Then Alice is like, BT dubs, your DNA is all over that murder victim, you two, so, uh, don't follow me. So she leaves, and they could just move the body immediately so Alice can't use it to blackmail them, but they don't because the plot didn't say so yet. Then the bat signal lights up, so Kate has to go do something else. But whatever it was, it wasn't that important, because we just cut to Batwoman beating the shit out of some random thug in an alley somewhere. She hobbles the guy, breaks his arm, comes this close to strangling him to death too for... Well, they never tell us, but he's a man, so he must have had it coming, right? But Kate gets a hold of herself just in time, decides not to strangle this man to death, and then instead of apprehending him and taking him to the GCPD for whatever it was he did, she just tells this criminal to get lost. She could have tied him up and called the cops to come arrest him. It would have taken virtually no effort on her part whatsoever. But instead, she just lets him go free because she is the worst crime fighter in the world. And what happens next is actually pretty interesting. Kate seems to have what appears to be an anxiety attack or some kind of stress-related event. So troubled is she by what she did to Cartwright that it's causing her to lose control of herself and kind of freak out. And I like this, believe it or not. I still hate Kate's guts. I have zero sympathy for her, and she's not off the hook for letting that criminal go free just now. But I will give credit here. Kate is not just brushing this whole thing off like when she killed Bruce. She's having a vaguely human reaction to what she did last week, and it's probably the most human Kate has looked so far. It's just a shame it won't last long. Cut to the Batcave, and Kate monologues that in saving her sister, she has become more like her sister. Uh, if you want to frame it that way, sure, but that's not what happened. Kate didn't save Alice. Jacob did. What Kate did was strangle a defenseless man to death in an act of revenge. Yes, the guy was a monster, I'm not disputing that. But it's like that Brooklyn Nine-Nine meme. 
cool motive, still murder. And now we're seeing the first problem with this situation. Kate does seem to acknowledge that killing Cartwright was wrong. But in her mind, it wasn't wrong because it was illegal or immoral. She couldn't care less about that. It was wrong because of how it made her feel. Already she's trying to justify it to herself. I did it to save my sister. No, you f***ing didn't. You took revenge on a man who was tied up and helpless. But this is Kate's narrative, and this is how the show is reinterpreting what she did. Now, as far as the writers are concerned, Kate murdered Cartwright to save Alice because they're trying to make Kate's crime seem much more forgivable than it really was. It's absolutely pathetic of them, and brace yourself, because it gets worse. So Luke asks Kate if she found anything on Cartwright yet, and she lies to him. Then Luke gets a text about the post-conviction relief hearing for the guy who supposedly killed his father being moved up to later today. He's anxious about it, but given all the evidence against the guy, he's not too worried. Yet. Cut to Alice looking for Mouse in her new hideout. Why she's searching there is anyone's guess, since she moved into that place after her and Mouse got separated, so he wouldn't know to go there even if he were in his right mind. And she finds all her thugs dead. Killed by comically large bear traps, of all things. Your guess is as good as mine. And she finds a note that reads, Did you think I forgot? Your friend from Coriana. I don't know what that's about, I really don't care, but we'll have to put a pin in it for now. Cut to Jacob and Sophie. Jacob's very suspicious about the situation with the Lucius Fox killer, because four cameras worth of security footage mysteriously went missing, and then there's the $50,000 money transfer to the shop owner for reasons that seem very sketchy. Anyway, he wants Sophie to look into this, because he trusts her. He didn't trust her once he found out that she'd been lying to him about Batwoman, but now he suddenly does. She didn't do a damn thing to earn his trust back, and she points out that her position about Batwoman has not changed, but he just magically trusts her again for no reason, because the plot says so. Sophie tries to get in touch with Kate, but Kate doesn't feel like talking because she's having flashbacks to killing Cartwright the night before. And then Alice walks into the gay bar. Someone she wronged in the past killed all her thugs, so she needs Kate's help to find Mouse. Kate wants to leave that to the crows, but Alice thinks the crows would just kill him. Kate's not having any of this and really just wants Alice to go away, but Alice promises that once she has Mouse, they'll leave the city and Kate will never have to deal with her again. That, of course, would leave Alice and Mouse free to terrorize some other city and kill many more innocent people, but that doesn't affect Kate, so she doesn't care. Out of sight, out of mind is all she's thinking about. So she agrees to help, but they're doing things her way. And since her way involves strangling men to death until they choke on their own blood, Alice thinks that's a great idea! Kate calls Jacob, saying she wants to help in the search for Mouse, but Jacob's handling it and just wants her to take a load off. Though he does tell her that Mouse attacked a nurse outside of Arkham last night. So Alice fills in some of those blanks. While Mouse was locked up in Arkham, one of the doctors experimented on him with the fear toxin. Not Jonathan Crane, though, a different doctor. Apparently, fear toxin is just really easy to get your hands on for some reason. So they figure out that Mouse might be confused and looking for the nurses who attended to him during these experiments. It makes more sense than a lot of other things the show has done, so let's go with it. They visit the house of one of Mouse's former nurses, they lie and tell her they're crows, she does not ask to see their IDs, because of course she doesn't. And she doesn't recognize the most infamous killer in the city either, because of course she doesn't. Also, she didn't even know that Mouse had escaped last year. This woman does not appear to be all that observant. So anyway, she lets them wait inside. We cut to Sophie, who has come to see the owner of the store where Lucius was killed. She finds the woman dead on her apartment floor, and then someone knocks Sophie out of the way of a sniper's gunshot, taking the bullet themselves. And it's Julia. Okay, I like the actress a lot in her first appearance, so bringing her back is certainly not a bad thing. Julia heard that someone put a bounty on Sophie's head, so she volunteered for this assignment, or something like that. And I have no idea how that works. Julia's British intelligence, and Gotham is pretty far from Britain. Seems like SOP would likely be to just inform an American intelligence agency and have them handle this, rather than sending one of their own agents all the way across the pond, but why would we expect the writers to explain simple things like that at this point? Then Julia's like, hey, you're Kate Kane's ex, right? Me too! Because that's the kind of crap you talk about when you've just been shot! 
Though you'd never know she'd been shot by the way she's acting, she doesn't seem to be in any pain whatsoever. It's like she didn't even feel it. Kate may be kinda sorta acting like a human being this week, but all women are still indestructible, so things haven't changed that much. Given the way the Executioner storyline turned out, with all those poor, innocent, victimized POCs being wrongly imprisoned by evil, racist white people, you can kind of see where the writer's mindset is and where this is probably going. It might go another way. If it does, I'll be very surprised. But here is my prediction. Obviously, there's been some kind of conspiracy within the Crows to cover up the real murderer of Lucius Fox and pin the blame on someone else. I think the real killer will turn out to be Sophie's husband. Because, one, he's a straight white male, so you know the writers have been chomping at the bit for a chance to vilify him. Two, a sniper just took a shot at Sophie for some reason, someone put a hit on Sophie for some reason, and her husband would be harboring resentment toward her because of how their marriage fell apart. Three, demonizing the husband and taking him off the board permanently, by eventually killing him off, I'm assuming, removes the need for a messy divorce, removes that roadblock to Kate and Sophie getting back together, which ultimately is all the writers seem to care about. And four, it's looking more and more likely that the real killer was one of the crows, and he's the only other crow we've met. Could I be wrong about this? Sure. But that's what I think is going to happen. Anyway, back at the nurse's house, Alice offers to let Kate try out her butterfly knife, but Kate declines. I just thought I'd point out for the record that Kate had the opportunity to disarm Alice of a deadly weapon, and she didn't take it. Mouse shows up outside, but before Kate and Alice can do anything, the crows roll in and take him down. Jacob looks like he really wants to kill Mouse, but then he decides to not do that incredibly illegal thing and orders his guys to take Mouse to Arkham. Not to the GCPD, so Mouse can go through due process, mind you, but straight to Arkham. Because the legal system in Gotham makes no f***ing sense whatsoever. Pay attention to this scene. This is the man who murdered Jacob's estranged wife. Jacob has the opportunity to kill him right here. Now the Crows have always acted as if they have the legal authority to kill people, and nothing in the show has contradicted that yet as far as I'm aware of. So Jacob could kill Mouse right here and get away with it but he doesn't. Instead, he abides by the law, he puts his anger aside, and he brings Mouse to justice, or at least what passes for justice in this city. Now ask yourself this question. If Jacob can do this, why can't Kate? So it turns out the nurse called the crows on Kate and Alice because she saw right through their lies, and then the crows just happened to show up at the perfect time to apprehend Mouse by complete coincidence. Then she pulls a shotgun on Kate and Alice, so they beat up the old lady, and they fuck off before the crows find them. Back at the gay bar, Alice says that when she was hooked up to the fear toxin, she had to relive her worst fear, which was being left behind by Kate. Weird, since they spent so much more time on the zombie grandma stuff, but whatever. And she refuses to do the same thing to Mouse, so they're gonna break him out of Arkham. Kate is uncomfortable with the idea of freeing a wanted killer, Beats me why she has a problem with it now. She's done it like a dozen times before and never thought twice about it. But she's like, if I help you break him out, how am I any better than you? And Alice is like, duh, you're not. And I'm absolutely on Alice's side here. They're both horrible people, but at least Alice isn't being a massive hypocrite about it, pretending to be a good person when she's obviously not. Case in point, Kate then says, I'm not a criminal. Kate, you... you... Kate, f you. F write the hell off. You were a criminal after you murdered Cartwright. You were a criminal before you murdered Cartwright. You've broken 
I don't know how many laws in your laughable attempts to be a crime fighter, which very often end in you letting the criminals go free instead of bringing them to justice, the most recent example of this being about 15 minutes ago. I'm not a criminal. Kiss my ass! You contemptible bag of human shit! Walter White was less of a criminal than you are, and even he eventually owned up to it! What the hell's your excuse? Meanwhile, back at Arkham, some doctor is injecting Mouse with something. Liquid fear toxin, maybe? I don't know. Then Alice flat out admits that when she gave Cartwright to Kate, she was 100% setting Kate up to kill the guy. That she gave him to Kate, knowing that Kate would find out what he did to their mother and kill him for it. And that just made me laugh, because even though she's out of her f***ing mind, Alice can still see clear as day that Kate is human trash, while Kate has been in complete denial about it for the last 16 episodes. But though I did laugh, I'm also really annoyed, because I see what the writers are doing here. They're trying to transfer the blame of Cartwright's murder from Kate to Alice. Now Kate didn't murder Cartwright out of revenge, she absolutely did, Alice manipulated her into doing it. So the murder wasn't really Kate's fault, it was Alice's fault. That's what they're telling us. These writers should be ashamed of themselves. So Kate flips out about this, she attacks Alice, tries to strangle Alice. Holy shit with all the strangulations and throat-related injuries happening on this show lately. But again, she stops herself, and then they just lie there on the floor. Cut to a courtroom, they're addressing Lucius Fox's killer, Luke is there, Mary shows up for moral support. The former judge had cut corners on the case, and given the claims that the guy's confession was coerced out of him, the whole thing is sketchy enough that he's gonna get a retrial. And he's free to go until that happens. I'm not a lawyer, I don't know how this would work in real life, but that seems a little f***ed up to me. Then, back at the gay bar, something truly extraordinary happens. We get a scene where I almost didn't mind Ruby Rose's acting. It was nothing impressive, but she looked like she was really trying here. And holy shit, that's about all you could ask for at this point. The weight of what Kate did is finally hitting her. She feels like she's become a monster, and actually looks kind of emotionally vulnerable here. And then Alice, in one of her more surprisingly human moments, thanks Kate for killing the man who destroyed her life and their family, and then tells Kate not to feel guilty about it. The second time someone's told her that. The show is already bending over backwards to let Kate off the hook, to absolve Kate of any wrongdoing for the murder she committed, and it's absolute bullshit. That's not how this works. That's not how the law works. The only way to truly absolve Kate is for her to go to the police and confess what she did, and that's obviously not happening. But we all knew it was going to play out this way, so it's not like we didn't see this coming. Again, Kate makes it very clear that she doesn't feel guilty. She only feels guilty for not feeling guilty. So she doesn't care that she's a murderer, doesn't care that she broke the law, doesn't care that she took a human life twice, she only cares about how it made her feel. It's like I've said time and time and time again, Kate really doesn't give a shit about anything unless it somehow affects her. Because she is a horrible, horrible, HORRIBLE person. So Kate is scared that she's becoming like Alice, and Alice asks her if that would really be so awful. Frankly, no, it wouldn't. From where I'm sitting, that would actually be a big improvement for Kate. Anyway, Kate finally agrees to help Alice break Mouse out of Arkham, agrees to help reunite her with Mouse, but needs to know that she can trust Alice, and makes her promise that no one will die. Kate never had a problem with Alice killing people before, but she does now, and she wants her to promise, even though she has no way of making sure that Alice will keep her word. Keep that in mind for later. Nevertheless, Alice does promise not to kill anyone, and she seems to be genuine about it because she feels like they finally made a connection here, enough so that Alice is actually letting her guard down. So they rig up a delivery van with a decoy fake bomb or something to keep the security guards busy while they sneak into Arkham through some underground tunnels. I don't know why they thought the guards posted outside the building would have stopped them from doing that, but whatever. So they get in through these tunnels, they put on the rabbit masks to disguise themselves, 
Kate beats the shit out of two guards, and then they split up because they need two keys to unlock the cell that they have no way of knowing Mouse is in, but he's in anyway because the plot says so. And then we cut to the illegal underground abortion clinic because that's where Sophie took Julia to get medical attention for her gunshot wound instead of, you know, a f***ing hospital. You'd think that Julia, being a government agent, would have access to medical facilities if she needed them, but no, she had to go to this illegal clinic instead. Sophie is treating the bullet wound herself, even though she's not a doctor. Then Mary comes in and she does it, even though she's not a doctor. And not much of an aspiring doctor either, because doctors are required by law to report bullet wounds to the proper authorities, and, well, I think we all know Mary isn't going to do that. Cut to Luke in his car, and he's watching his dad's killer, Reggie, as Reggie helps his grandma with the groceries. Not a zombie grandma, mind you, an ordinary grandma. So, just on a whim, Luke decides to confront this man. Not the wisest thing in the world to do, but I'm gonna cut Luke some slack on this one, because we're 16 episodes in, and this is literally the first thing the poor bastard has gotten to do that didn't involve him being Kate's butt monkey. When you're starving, every crumb is a feast. So he talks to Reggie, and it gets kind of emotional, and finally he just flat out asks the guy, Why did you kill my dad? And Reggie's like, Dude, I walked into the store to grab a snack. The next thing I know, I'm waking up covered in blood with a gun in my hand. He feels bad that Lucius died, seems genuine about the whole thing, and he almost has Luke convinced that he's innocent, and then another sniper takes him out. And Luke's a good guy, so he tries to save him, but there's nothing he can do. You know what? This was a good scene. Luke felt like a person rather than some gopher for Kate to boss around. The actor who plays Luke does a really good job here. Not shockingly, he seems like a reasonably talented performer who this show has completely wasted and underutilized because he's a man and thus a second-class citizen as far as the writers are concerned. Cut back to Alice, who walks into the office of the doctor who did all the fear toxin experiments on Mouse. And she would really like to kill him right now, but surprisingly proves herself to be trustworthy. She keeps her promise to Kate, and only takes his key, and then knocks him out. Cut to Kate as she takes out several more security guards, and this was actually one of the better fight scenes the show has done, I think. Pretty good choreography here, it's performed well. One of the guards gets the upper hand on her, but Alice walks in, and she tosses Kate her knife, which Kate then uses to stab this man in the leg. Keep that detail in mind, too, because that's about to become a pretty big plot hole. They go to Mouse's cell, which can only be opened when the two keys are turned by two people at the same time, kind of like they're launching a nuclear missile. It's pretty laughable, but hey, welcome to the CW. The fear toxin appears to have finally worn off. Mouse seems fairly lucid by Mouse standards, so Alice starts unstrapping him from the chair, but then Kate locks her in. And then Jacob shows up and reveals that the whole break-in was a ruse. It was all just a plan to capture Alice. So they're telling us that all those earlier scenes in this episode when Kate could have easily captured Alice but chose not to were part of the plan. Kate trusting Alice not to kill anyone in Arkham when they split up, even though Kate had no way of ensuring that Alice would keep her word, was part of the plan. Kate beating the living shit out of multiple Arkham security guards, not to mention stabbing one of them in the leg, was part of the plan. It was all just a ruse to get Alice into this cell and behind a locked door. Kate promised to reunite Alice with Mouse, and she did that, but she never promised to let them go free. Okay. Now, on the surface, this was a really good twist. After all the times Kate let Alice and Mouse go instead of trying to capture them, all the times she could have called the police and told them where Alice's hideout is but didn't, you'd never expect Kate to do this. I sure as hell didn't see it coming. This was a legit shock. So well done on that. But once you start thinking about it, it instantly falls apart. When Kate attacked Alice at the gay bar, Alice was essentially helpless at that point. Kate could have apprehended her right then and there and easily avoided all this nonsense, but she didn't. 
Instead, she went through with this insanely elaborate dog and pony show, which put many innocent lives in danger, which relied heavily on being able to trust a multiple murderer who has never been trustworthy before, and which was completely unnecessary because Kate could have easily captured Alice earlier in the episode. The only reason she didn't is because the plot didn't say so yet. In other words, the writers finally had Kate put Alice away, only to have her do it in the most ludicrous, bullshit, nonsensical way imaginable. Why would you do this? Why would you have Kate make a breakthrough like this, only for the ridiculous execution of said breakthrough strip away everything that could have been satisfying about it? For God's sake, even when Kate does the right thing, she does it in such a way that makes you want to punch her in the face. But ultimately, it really doesn't matter and we all know it. Give it a couple episodes and Kate will be letting Alice go free again like this never happened because that's just what she does. So they leave Alice in there and they walk away and Alice is just devastated. She's crying and begging for Kate to come back. She's like, Kate, you promised, you promised. And credit where it's due, Rachel Scarston absolutely knocks this scene out of the park. Ruby Rose is her usual self, but watched in isolation, the scene works because Rachel is so effing good here. It's just a damn shame that her talents were wasted on such a garbage storyline. Cut to Crow's HQ a while later. Jacob says the Arkham doctors are keeping Alice isolated. No idea why they're keeping her at Arkham after we just learned how corrupt and inhumane the medical staff is, but that never comes up. And neither does the guy that Kate stabbed in the leg. I guess he's not pressing charges or suing Kate or demanding that she cover his medical bills or anything. Apparently, he just decided to forget the whole thing. How convenient. Jacob has moved Cartwright's body so Alice can't use that against them anymore, and he thinks it's time that they put Alice behind them. Kate cries, or rather, Ruby Rose makes a face that she thinks a human being might make when they cry, and the two of them hug. And it's interesting to me that... Kate is more upset about having to put Alice in Arkham than she was about taking a human life. Back at the clinic, Luke shows up covered in Reggie's blood, and he's kind of in shock about the whole thing. Mary tells him about the store owner getting assassinated. She's starting to think that Reggie didn't kill Luke's dad after all, and clearly there's a conspiracy to cover this up, so her and Luke are on the same page here. Cut to Sophie and Julia at a safe house somewhere, watching the news covering Reggie's death. Lucius was Julia's godfather, as it turns out, so she goes to Bruce's office to see how Luke is doing. Instead, she finds Kate there. And because this is the CW, I instantly said to myself, you guys are gonna f aren't you? And yeah, they don't waste any time with that. The writers could barely contain themselves. Kate does admit that she's not the hero the city thinks she is, and as cathartic as that is to finally hear her say, it's not for the right reasons, so in the end it's f***ing meaningless. Then they make out, and the show cuts away so f***ing can ensue, because Kate getting laid is more important than her admitting that she murdered someone, or seeking advice about that, or anything. Kate is just the worst. Cut to Jacob in a parking lot, he notices a laser sight trained on him, he dodges the shot just in time, and since the assassin is a man, and thus not indestructible, Jacob is actually allowed to win this fight, how about that? He locates the assassin using a rearview mirror on a nearby car. He takes the guy out. It's one of the very rare moments of this show when Jacob has looked like the skilled professional he's supposed to be. But the guy dies before Jacob can find out who he is or what the hell is going on. And finally, we cut back to Mouse and Alice locked up in Arkham. Alice is pissed off, and it's not hard to see why. And she says that she doesn't want to be a prisoner. She wants to be a queen. And it's pretty hard not to feel bad for Alice here. She opened herself up to Kate, she trusted Kate, proved to Kate that she could be trustworthy, promised to get out of Kate's life and leave her in peace, and seemed to be genuine about all of it, only for Kate to completely f*** her over. And yes, Alice is a criminal. Yes, behind bars is where she belongs. But it's so bizarre because the writers have created a situation completely unintentionally, I'm sure, where the psychotic multiple murderer feels more sympathetic than the quote-unquote good guy. Because the God's honest truth is, over the previous 16 episodes, we've seen far more humanity in the murdering psychopathic villain 
than we've ever seen in the hero. And there's something really messed up about that. Okay, this episode sucked, but put an asterisk next to it. Because there were things here, moments, little glimpses when it looked like the show was trying to improve, trying to take the necessary steps to become somewhat less terrible, but couldn't because it was held back by its own stupidity and the maddening political ideology of the writers. Things I liked about this episode. Luke Fox got an actual storyline that he did a good job with. It was emotionally affecting. It did not involve Kate. And it was a very welcome change. I wish that would happen more often. There were some good scenes between Kate and Alice. Yes, that's mainly thanks to how damn good Rachel Scarston was in this episode, but still. There's a storyline about the Crows potentially breaking the law and Jacob trying to put a stop to it instead of the Crows breaking the law whenever the f*** they please and everyone in Gotham just sort of allowing it. And not only did Kate seem to have actual human emotions this week rather than being an unfeeling Yas Queen Slay robot, but she also actually captured Alice and had her locked up. She didn't want to, and God knows she didn't do it for the right reasons, but she did it. These are all positive changes for however long they last. Unfortunately, in Kate's case, it's like winning the 100-yard dash, not by being the fastest, but by breaking the kneecaps of all the other runners. Yeah, technically you won the race, but you really shouldn't be proud of it. For the first time, we have Kate genuinely questioning herself, really struggling with something because she can't deal with the fact that she committed murder. Ordinarily, this type of thing can and should make for compelling drama and character development. The problem is, the writers started backpedaling on it immediately. One episode later, and they're already jumping through every hoop they can think of to let Kate off the hook and absolve her of the extreme criminality and illegality of what she did. They never even referenced what Bruce told her about how once you take a life you're on a slippery slope because if they did that, they'd have to remind the audience that this is actually the second time Kate has killed somebody and the writers can't handle the realities of Kate killing one person, let alone two. Everyone is telling Kate that she did nothing wrong, that she shouldn't feel guilty, and she doesn't. Oh, she feels guilty but not because she murdered someone and broke the law. No, she feels guilty because she violated whatever bullshit moral code she thought she had and became more like Alice. As far as Kate is concerned, that was the real crime. Which is an absolutely despicable, repugnant message to give the audience. So instead of using this as an opportunity to have Kate reflect on her actions and learn from her mistake, potentially making her a more sympathetic and relatable character, all you did was expose exactly how self-centered, narcissistic, and loathsome she really is, and how psychologically ill-suited she is to being a crime fighter because she gives less than zero shits about upholding the law. Even her capturing Alice wasn't about her putting a dangerous criminal behind bars. It was about Kate not wanting Alice around because she's a living reminder of what Kate did. Kate does not care about the law. She cares as far as how it affects her personally and no farther. And even in that case, she thinks the law doesn't even apply to her, so she shouldn't be held accountable for anything she does. I mean, hell, she assaulted every security guard in Arkham. Those guys weren't criminals, they were just doing their jobs. Stabbed one of them in the leg. If she'd hit an artery, that guy might have bled to death. And all that could have been easily avoided if she'd just captured Alice in the gay bar when she'd had the perfect opportunity to do so. But she didn't, because she doesn't care. Kate doesn't care about justice. She doesn't care if people get hurt because of her. She's reprehensible. Absolutely reprehensible. You had the chance to make a positive change to Kate's character, and you threw it away. So yes, in the end, there were things in this episode that, at a glance, could be considered a course correction and a change for the better, until you actually think about them, and you realize that nothing has changed at all. Kate is every bit as awful as she's always been, she just tried a little harder to make you think otherwise this week. If you enjoyed this Batwoman review, I've reviewed every episode, so check out the playlist on the channel and watch the other ones. Ding that bell icon and follow me on Twitter using the link in the description so you'll always be notified about new videos. Help me in my never-ending war against the YouTube algorithm by liking, sharing, subscribing, and making sure you're still subscribed because YouTube likes to randomly unsubscribe people just to troll them. Do all the things, stay healthy, stay safe, Wash your hands, and I'll see you next time.